Okay, 50 people, absolute max. Three high school seniors decide to make a name for themselves by throwing the party of their lives. That's your party? You guys are throwing that? That's yeah. where I'm going at. Yeah, I too crazy. But as word of their event spreads, their party starts to get out of control. The three try to salvage their lives while creating a legend in Project X. All right, Project X, Sean, Liz, you've just seen it. Sean, why don't you tell us a little bit about it? So Project X is another of these found footage pictures. And this one details three teenagers. One of the teenagers' parents go out of town. And so they say, we're gonna throw a party at that house. And basically the movie is a profile of that party being thrown. Surprisingly enough, the script is written by Michael Bacall, who wrote 21 Jump Street, which is one of the surprise hits of the season. It's framed from the perspective of a random AV club member that they befriended to film their exploits. And the script itself is not very complex and just goes wildly uh, outside the box. Michael Bacall said he himself, he was kind of a dork in high school, so mm -hmm. none of the things that happened in the movie happened to him in high school, <laughs> which makes me understand why the film's so unrealistic at times. This has elements of teen comedies we've been seeing for the last 30 years. We've got, you know, all the way back to Risky Business, up to Superbad. There's a lot of that in there. And what could be an interesting exploration of teenage lifestyle, if it goes really crazily wrong, but instead of going to that dark territory, it sort of turns it around and says, it doesn't matter what the consequences of these actions are. It's a pointless movie that doesn't really say anything, save for, if you're popular, everything is good. It doesn't matter what happens after, after high school. High school is the end all be all. I do think that the film tries so hard to be hip and relevant that it comes off just absurd at times. Yeah. And it's being called super bad on crack but I just don't think it has the charm in the heart of a movie like Superbad. There's little people who, you know, punch people in the crotch. <laughs> That's supposed to be funny. There's authority figures who have young babies who just say, we want it to be quiet, and they get tased in the neck, and that's supposed to be funny. You can't be serious, this is a great party. Either shut it down, or I'm calling the cops. No! Oh, oh, shut it up! I'm calling the cops on your ass now! Do it, genius! It's all on tape! The film would have been a lot stronger if it had villainized the establishment, if it would have shown the establishment as, as incredibly square or hurtful. But instead, it just has normal characters if, who have authority being punished for no real reason. They, they've cast a lot of people here who are unknowns who are more or less playing themselves. You have a guy named Thomas Mann who plays Thomas. So Kirby plays Kirby. Kirby mm -hmm. plays Kirby. So they're essentially improvising on screen. And they come across as natural, that's fine. They're not terribly likable people. But if the form is gonna be mockumentary, which is what this film is, mm -hmm. you need actors who have really strong sense of comic timing and could really think off the cuff. You need very witty actors, and I think these actors are very young and inexperienced. Yeah, if you compare it to Superbad, those right. actors like Jonah Hill, Michael Sarah. Michael Sarah. These are very talented, very funny young people that can really improvise well. Their comic timing has been shaped. It's great. There's often these allusions to the negative repercussions of partying, yet at the end, the film supports the positive outcomes well, this, of having a party. This is produced by Todd Phillips, who directed The Hangover, so it kind of feels like Someone decided that there's a dark area to go into, but we also have to appeal to this base of people who are gonna go see this movie, the audience that would be like something for The Hangover. So, you know, we have to have some sort of uplifting end, even though that doesn't really feel like a natural way to have the events of this picture lead to. So do you think this film is trendsetting, much like how Superbad kind of showed how high school life was back then? Teenagers will find this film really enjoyable. Well, but when you say teenagers, who are you talking about specifically? Fifteen-year-olds. Fifteen-year-olds aren't supposed to be able to see this movie. It's, and that's it's why they'll R. enjoy it, because there's lots of boobs. But I don't think it's memorable. I don't think it's a trendsetter. I don't think it's a game changer. I just <laughs> think that in a year it will be forgotten. But in that you know 90 minute to two hour span of people enjoying it, they're gonna have a great time. One thing to note for more sensitive audiences is that uh, you might get sick watching this movie, and it's not because of the content, though it is a little bit racy, of course, mm -hmm. but it's the shaky camera work. I'm such an old lady. But with the loud music and the shaky camera and the fast cutting, it gets a little disorienting at times. All right, we've taken this project as far as it can go. Let's vote. Take your tickets. Project X is not a successful project. 
Stay at home and have your own party or just stay at home. Skip it. It made me sick, but it will make teenage boys and girls laugh, cry, or both. Stream it. All right, your votes add up to half a ticket, which is a stream it for Project X. <sighs> All right, cheers. cheers. To boobs. <laughs>